So if we review our Excel sheet, we've identified our tracked entity attributes already. So you can see, you know, how this as a reference tool is quite helpful, right? We can just go to this and identify exactly what it is that we need to find or potentially create, okay? So if I go back to DHIS2, okay, um, I'm gonna go back to program, this whole screen here, and we have an option tracked entity attribute, okay? So before we were looking at tracked entity types, okay? And we could view them, we could add new ones, okay? If we look at tracked entity attributes, I'm just going to list them. You could also select from the, the left side menu here, tracked entity attribute, okay? But I'll just click on list or I could select from this menu here and we get a list of the attributes that exist in the system. Now, once again, I've, I've created all the attributes for you here because when you go to create the program, you know, that way they're all here. Once you create one or two, you know, the process is the exact same for all of the other attributes that you would make, okay? So what we're going to do, we'll just make uh, a couple um, of these attributes, okay? Um, I know there was some questions about auto-generation of these uh, IDs, okay? So uh, I think Brian gave a resource um, about that, okay? And you saw, I guess you saw when we're entering data for the program, um, it was auto-generating IDs. So you can do one of two things um, generally for these, uh, with these unique IDs. Um, you can either, you know, have it identified as a unique ID and grab it from maybe a national ID system, or people have maybe a, a health card or a national health or a national ID card or a passport, you know, some card, um, some way of identifying them. Um, and, and you could enter that manually. Um, you could also have um, a, um, a unique ID that is generated automatically, okay, just depending on what you need to do. All right. Um, and then all of these other pieces of information, address, age, date of birth, first name, last name, um, they're, they're pretty kind of self-explanatory in terms of what they're defining here. All right. So let's take a look um, at um, a registration number, for example, just to kind of go over some of the options um, that would be available if you were to, to create that. And, and once again, as I mentioned, um, you could create one or more IDs and associate it with your program. Um, oftentimes, even if they have a national ID of some sort, I, I will still create a unique ID um, for that record um, separately that's automatically generated to find it. Um, that's kind of user facing um, so people can see it to see it uh, right away. All right, so um, if I go here, um, so these are already created. So theoretically, we don't need to make any more, okay? But I'm just gonna make one to go through the process. All right, same as before. So I'll click on new here and I'll make a, I'm just adding my initials, okay, to the beginning because I already have this tracked entity attribute in the system. I'm recreating one that already exists, right? So if I, um, I don't really want it to be the same as anything that already exists, right? I have a registration number here already, right? So I wanna make it unique. So I'll use my initials just for example purposes. Okay. But generally these tracked entity attributes don't have any prefixes, okay? It's just for demonstration purposes, even if I could just make it different and say unique, just to give it a different name. Okay, so we give it a short name, okay. Form name, hopefully this field is recognizable to many of you. This is what the person, the user will see um, on the registration form itself, right? So we're dealing with tracked entity attributes. This is going to appear in the registration form of the program, all right? So I could just say unique ID, for example, to call it something different. Okay, um, I could give it a code, uh, description, and okay. um, if there's uh, if there's some other there's quite a few fields here. We will we'll, we won't go through everything necessarily, but just to get you in the kind of mindset of how these are made. Um, if it's an option set, you can apply an option set. For example, sex is a attribute. Okay. Um, so you could say sex, uh, you could select the sex option set here. Um, the value type, many, many value types, okay. Um, we'll refer you to the documentation. Okay, I'll put a resource there. Um, so you can go over all of these. Um, this is a, a unique ID. I'm gonna say it's text. Um, for example, it can be a combination of numbers and letters. Um, aggregation type, okay, many aggregation types as well. Um, best source to review these are the documentation. This is a unique ID number. So this is not something that's to be aggregated, okay. 
Um, but if it was something like a uh, sex or something, you could say count. Um, but it would automatically kind of default to the aggregation type here. Okay. Now there's these options here, unique. Okay. So for example, I could say um, entire system. And what this means is when I make a unique attribute and I say it's unique in the entire system, it means that, you know, um, when I register somebody with this ID, only one tracked entity instance in the entire system can have this value. Okay. So for example, if I'm using a passport number, right, there's only one person in the country that would have that passport number. Okay. No one else would share that passport number. If you had a national ID, it would be the same thing, right? Only one person in that uh, particular country would have that national ID that they're assigned. Okay. If it's not unique, then you could have multiple values. For example, first name, right? It doesn't make any sense to make that unique because many people could have the first, same first name. Okay. Um, and then it would be kind of erroneous to only allow, you know, the same person um, or, or not allow people to register people with the same first name. Okay. If I say unique, and then I have this one, when I select unique, that's where this automatically generated thing comes in. So if I select that, then I have to enter this pattern. Okay, and uh, Brian linked some documentation about the pattern. I'll just do an example of one, um, letters and numbers, for example. Okay. So just have a look at that documentation because there's a lot of ways this pattern can be generated. All I'm saying here is generate a random string of XX represents, X represents a letter and the pound sign represents a number. So it's gonna generate a random string of two numbers and four, or sorry, two letters and four numbers, okay? But there's a lot of things you can do with this pattern, okay? Uh, we're not gonna get into all the ins and outs of this, but, but you can have a look at the, the documentation a bit more and I'll add some more links on Moodle so they're not just, uh, you know, it's hard to find in the chat because there's several things within this that you can kind of refer to, okay? Um, some other ones that might be interesting, confidential, okay? This is for encryption purposes. You can encrypt these attributes. Um, I'll refer you to the documentation on this one as well. Um, there's a lot that you can do, and there's a lot of implications of using this. Um, many systems, um, you know, don't don't use it because of the implications that exist. Uh, it's it's a bit limited uh, the way it's implemented now because once I select it as confidential, I can't search. I can't use it to search. Um, so, uh, but it does encrypt it in the database. So there's kind of some pros and cons there that uh, we won't get into now necessarily. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of things that we can do here. But the basic premise is if I need to create an attribute that doesn't exist, I give it a name, right? I fill in some of the required fields that are marked with a star, okay? I give it a value type. If it's, if I'm trying to, in this case, I'm generating something. If I'm not, I wouldn't fill in any of this information, right? And then I would click on save, okay? And that's the basic premise, right? But once again, all of these can be reused, okay? So if I have a first name already, I don't need to make another first name. If I have sex already, I don't need to make another sex. So even though we're focusing on this TV program, if I were to go to make another program, immunization, non communicable disease, whatever it is that I'm making, okay, anything that I've already created or that already exists, okay, I would not need to make again. And I noticed Brian pointed out in the chat even that they're releasing a kind of metadata package that would give you these already configured. You could just install them on your system, okay, and that might make it even easier for you. So you don't even need to make them um, initially from the start, okay? So, but but once they're made, you don't have to worry about recreating them, okay? Because you really want to reuse, really want to emphasize that reuse of metadata um, in the system, okay? So I'm going to stop here again, okay, and give you a chance to have a look at the tracked entity attribute management screen. Chances are many of you have done that already, but just to give everyone else a chance if they haven't, okay, give you about three, five minutes, it won't take very long um, to kind of get here, right? But everyone should know where this page is because you should be looking for tracked entity attributes that ex uh, exist already. And if they don't exist, then you should create them, right? So if I were to create a more simple one, like first name, right, without all this unique ID stuff, right? I would just go through, I would fill in the information that I need, okay, um, for this. You know. text, none, okay? and then I could save it, right? So I just fill in those kind of fields um, that I need for that, and then I save it, okay? If I need to create something, right? And if you have a blank system, you might need to create something. Um, if you're creating a new program and there's attributes that are missing, then you might need to create something as well, okay? 
So I'll stop here. And then if you go back to the learner's guide, exercise three, okay, it walks you through how to access the tracked entity attribute page and add them if necessary, okay? Um, but once again, if they're already there, you don't need to, but you should all know how to access this page. And if you do need to add some, um, it's pretty, pretty uh, standard procedure in terms of adding metadata. Click on the plus sign, run through the fields, save your attribute, okay? So, so we've created our option sets, we've created our tracked entity attributes, our tracked entity type, okay? Now we can start to associate or create our data elements and associate any data elements that we need to, okay, with the option sets that we've made, all right? So if we just check our sheet here, and we look at some of these data elements. For example, TV patient type has an option set of TV patient type, all right? So if we were to make that data element, the option set should already be there in place so we can associate our option set with our data element, okay? So in order to do that, go over here to data elements in maintenance, okay? So if you're at the front page in DHIS2, you'd have to get into maintenance first. Okay, then from here, we can go into data elements, okay? And then similarly, I can access from the left side or just list them here, right? Now that data element, TV patient type, if I just type in TV, you'll see all the TV um, data elements. We have this prefix TBTC, which is TB treatment card. It's the name of the program. You can see this data element is already created, okay? And once again, um, when you're creating these data elements, you know, I threw out this question yesterday about naming. Um, you know, we still want to follow those naming principles as much as possible, okay, when we create these data elements. Um, I often find, uh, especially with these types, you'll see here there's prefixes. So you'll see other data elements too. Um, MCMR, for example, there's data elements with prefixes. And, and you can see um, it's useful, especially in an admin context, to filter out data elements that you need, because um, you can have hundreds of data elements um, and it can become quite difficult to find. It's not really the most friendly for end users, to be honest, because they don't really care about the prefix necessarily, right? As long as you group things together in a nice way and make it easy for them to find, um, there should be other ways they can find it, but it does help administrators more, more in a sense, okay? Um, so we can add those prefixes and give them good data element names, right? So following these principles that we've discussed, um, or hopefully you've had some, um, some exposure to in the past, all right? And let's just create the TV treatment type data element as a refresher, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the blue plus icon. Once again, these are already made, right? So you don't have to make them all for the purposes of this exercise, right? And, and this should be quite, it gets quite repetitive to create many, many data elements, right? So I'm just throwing in my initials again to keep it TV patient type, okay, and then assign it a short name. Sorry, there. We wouldn't normally have all these initials here. This is just to kind of keep it unique, okay? Uh, code, color, and icon. Once again, mostly for Android. There's a lot of fields here in data elements. I'm not gonna go through them all, okay? Hopefully um, you've had a chance to, to review creating data elements before, right? So I'm gonna skip over these, uh, skip over quite a few, um, just to kind of get into the meat of this, right? In this case, one thing we, I'm gonna skip, um, form name is a good one to add actually, uh, just to get rid of this stuff here at the beginning, okay? Domain type, we're, we're always using tracker, okay? In this case, right? If you're creating aggregate data elements, then you're using aggregate data, uh, the aggregate data element domain. But anytime you're dealing with events or tracker programs, you're creating tracker type data elements, okay? So just keep that in mind whenever you're working with these tracker data elements. That's the only really kind of key difference. But if you've created an event program before, it's the same basic principle, okay? You create tracker type data elements. Or the value type and the aggregation type. This is actually an, an interesting one, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down to the option set, okay? And we're looking at the patient type. So if I select the option set, it'll actually automatically assign the data element, a value type and an aggregation type, 
and I can't modify them, all right? This is because it inherits the properties of the option set, right? So the option set is a text value and the aggregation type, well, you can't aggregate it in the same way anymore because we're dealing with tracker data elements. We will talk about what to do with this later on, right? I saw some questions about things like program indicators. We will absolutely go over that in more detail later on, okay? But when we're dealing with option sets, okay, your data element will just inherit the characteristics of the option set that you've made, okay? And you can see here this category combination, for those of you who deal with aggregate, you can't modify it either, right? Because you're dealing with the tracker domain, okay? And then I'll just save. All right, that should be pretty straightforward, but that's why we create the option sets first, okay? Because when we go to make our data elements, we just select our option set, it inherits the properties of the option set that we've made, and we don't have to go back and forth between option sets and data elements, okay? Well, if So right now we are uh, at this place, number six, where we have created data elements with the domain type tracker. And uh, next, what we are going to do is to identify number of program stages in the program and identify if any of the program stages are repeated or not. And then to identify potential scheduling of the program stages. So these three we will take together. And then uh, followed by that, we will actually go into uh, creating a tracker program. So um, let me just try to recap uh, our design. So if you can recall uh, the program design for the TB treatment card, uh, we have this program, which is the TB treatment card. And this program we identified that uh, we have four program stages. So we have the first one, which is uh, initial diagnosis and pace. Followed by that, we have continuation. Uh, I mean, in fact, two separate uh, phases, continuation one and two. And then the final program stage, which is the end of treatment. So um, like now the question is like out of these uh, four phases, which ones are repeatable? And I mean, do we have any program stages which are repeatable? If not, like why we don't configure it as repeatable? So uh, the answer to this question, um, I mean, to, to find the answer, what we can actually do is to look at what are the data elements that we are creating, we have, that we are collecting in each of these program stages. So let me... Um, try to look at the different, um, share my screen again, okay. So these are the different um, data elements that we collect in, uh, in, in each of these program stages. So you can see in the diagnosis and initial phase, we are collecting data items such as the TB patient type, the disease size, uh, uh, extra pulmonary TB site and the type of treatment, sputum smear, the result, culture result, things like that. So interesting thing to note here is that now here in this TB program, what actually happens is uh, uh, we are encountered with the patient who has been diagnosed as uh, having TB. And then we capture the information, the data uh, throughout his uh, uh, treatment period. Right, so uh, in the initial uh, phase, as you can see here in the pro first program stage, we have a set of data items that we create that we collect, and uh, somewhere between two to three months, roughly around the day sixty, we are going to see that uh, patient again, and we are going to collect few, few few more data items. So you can see the data items that we are collecting, or as data elements that we are collecting on the first program stage and the second one are kind of different. And when it comes to this continuation, which is around 150 days, uh, again, we are collecting few other data elements, which are somewhat different to what we are collecting uh, uh, in the second stage, which is uh, around the 60 day. And then finally, when the patient has an outcome, so it's probably patient is cured, the, but the time of course for, for, for the patient to get cured uh, can be different. So it totally depends on uh, many, many factors, such as like if the patient is resistant to some of the drugs that we are giving to him, 
uh, he may not uh, ideally uh, complete his prayer, his his uh, treatment period in like uh, six months. So there can I mean the, pro, the the duration can get can be longer. And you can also see that at the end of treatment, the final program stage, the data elements that we are collecting here are, are, are again different to what we see in the stage number two and three. So this is the reason why we have to have uh, several program stages. And because we are not collecting the same data, data element in each of these program stages, we can't make them repeatable. Uh, if you can recall what Surajit was mentioning, like uh, one main reason for us to make repeatable program stages. For example, uh, 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 the, the initial example he mentioned around the, uh, about the antenatal care program. So we had this ANC visit in which uh, during the antenatal care period, we are collecting same set of data. It's just that the time that we are uh, seeing during the pregnancy changes, but it's the same set of data that we are collecting. But in this example, it is not the same, and we are collecting different data items, data elements uh, in each of these visits. So this is one reason why we have to have multiple program stages, and all these program stages are not going to be repeated. I hope that is clear. Right. So um, now that uh, we have identified uh, So now that we have identified the number of program stages in this uh, uh, TB program and the uh, what are the data elements in each of this prog uh, program stage, whether they are repeatable or not, and also possible uh, scheduling, like, I mean, uh, from the start date, how many days at which we are going to collect this data. So these, these items, now we are clear about that. So the uh, step number 10 is actually to create the tracker program. So if there are any questions related to uh, what we have done so far, uh, kindly uh, ask them in the chat or, or, prob uh, or much better if you can ask them in the Slack. So uh, my colleagues will answer them. Right. So we are going to create the tracker program now. So we are ready with all the uh, metadata items, such as the, the attributes, the data elements, option sets. So we are ready with them. And now we have a clear idea about how our program is organized. We know there's one TB program. And in that one, we have four program stages. And these four program stages, all of them are not repeatable. And we know like uh, the first program stage starts on day zero. And the second one is around two to three months. If you can recall the uh, data collection form that uh, Shurajit uh, demonstrated to you before. So that means around the day 60, we are going to collect uh, the, uh, the data for the second program stage. And uh, then around day 150, we have the third. And then we have the final program stage, which is at the end of the pro, uh, TB program. Okay, right. So let's try to create uh, the tracker program. So we are going to use the same program, uh, the DHS2 instance, the customization DHS2 instance to create this uh, tracker program. All right, so I uh, hope you can see my screen. Um, yeah, we are in this customization program, uh, customization DHS2 instance. So in this instance, you can see, so let me start over again. I'm going to select the maintenance. And then in the maintenance app, I'm going to select the program. So, if I click on this list icon, I can already see that we have this TB treatment card. So this TB treatment card is a pre-configured program, but because uh, of the uh, user role uh, or kind of the permissions that we are having in this system, if I click on this uh, TB treatment card, uh, it will say that I don't have permissions to edit this object. That is because, uh, I mean, we have configured it that way so that uh, the participants won't kind of uh, alter the configuration. So what we are actually going to do now is to create our own TB program, right? 
Uh, I must also mention uh, about one thing, like now when we are, uh, when I'm going through the different options, the features available in this uh, DHS2 uh, maintenance app when configuring the program, uh, like I, I will try to go over like the most, uh, the, the widely used uh, features, but there are like so many features and options available while you are configuring that, that I'm not going to explain and go into detail. But what I'm going to do is I will share uh, the link to the documentation with you so that uh, let me copy and share it in the chat so that if you have any questions like if you want more information about what each of these features uh, in the maintenance app means you can always check this document uh, documentation and get more information about it uh, one reason I, I'm mentioning that uh, it's very important for you to uh, see what is there in the documentation is that like, so you might, um, uh, what you will do is you will customize this uh, uh, tracker program today, but it's quite likely like if you are working in an NGO or, or even in the ministry that you will not do your customization of the next tracker program for a couple of months or even years. So it's quite likely that the configurations that you are seeing currently in this uh, DHIS2 maintenance app might change in one year's time. So it's no point trying to memorize what are the features that are there and what it, what everything means. So the best thing like what, um, what we all, all of us, we do is like we always try to refer the documentation so that uh, we can get a better idea about what is available and uh, and a kind of, kind of a, and, and all the definitions, right? So let's try to create the uh, TB program. So first thing what I'm going to do is I'm already in this program tab, as you can see here. And I will click on this uh, plus icon towards the right bottom of your um, screen. And once I do that, I will have a couple of options like uh, it asks whether I'm going to create an event program or a tracker program. So of course we are going to create a tracker program. So I will, uh, I will click on tracker program. And once I do that, you will see that uh, it's going to uh, take us through series of steps you can see like it starts from number one, which is program details and ends with the final step, which is uh, number six uh, notifications. So uh, we are going to follow each of these steps and in each of these steps, we have to do some configurations um, in, in completing our tracker program design. Okay, so the first is to give uh, our tracker program a name. So because this program that you are going to create in this THIS2 instance is going to be a public program, tracker program, it's always good to uh, give it, uh, I mean, ha have, have your initials to that particular program so that, uh, I mean, you are sure like which program you are editing. So I've, I'm going to use uh, Surajit's uh, initials for now because uh, some of these metadata was created uh, with his initials. So I'm going to give it a name, TB, treatment card, right? And the short name also, I'm going to use the same, right? And there are some of these uh, uh, options which are there, like which we are not frequently using. And some of these things like uh, colors and icons are kind of very useful if you are going to configure uh, your tracker program to be used in mobile, uh, in DHS2 mobile. And then there is this field called version. This is also uh, uh, mostly important if you are capturing data from mobile devices. So whenever there is an offline data collection or whenever uh, the, the capture application of the DHIS2 is fetching, uh, is fetching uh, uh, data or metadata from the uh, DHIS2 instance, it always checks the version number and tries to uh, uh, pull all the metadata from the DHIS2 instance to the uh, client device or the browser if there is any change in the version, right? And the next is I have to select the track entity type. So uh, we have already cre created or configured the track entity type, which is listed here, which is person. So I'm going to select this track entity type person, right? And then we have this option called display front page list. So what this mean, if you can remember, when you are collecting, when we are collecting, uh, uh, when we are actually entering data in tracker capture application, uh, we select the organization unit and we select the program. And uh, you, if you, you might be able to recall that it, it displays a list of uh, persons who are already registered in the system, right? That's the kind of default uh, feature, but for it to be default, how it works is we have to 
uh, tick on this icon here, checkbox here, display front page list. So when you do that, uh, the front page of the tracker capture application will list all the registered track entity instances. And then we have this uh, option, first stage appears on registration page. So that means um, when we are collecting data using the tracker capture application, uh, when we click on the register button, it will list out all the attributes. These are usually uh, the demographic, the information and few more. Uh, these are the ones which appears in the registration page. But there may be instances where the first stage that we have in our tracker program uh, will have some data elements which are kind of very related to the, um, to the registration information that we are collecting, right? So if, that's a, if that is the scenario that we are encountering, what we can do is if we just uh, tick on this, uh, it will include the first stage, the first program stage also on the registration page, right? But uh, for this application, uh, it is not relevant. So I'm not going to select. And this access level is something that we, we, will, uh, we will cover in next week when we are discussing about uh, the sharing settings. And then we, uh, there are a few other uh, options, features available, like for example, completed events expiry date. So that means like when an event is expired, how many days uh, uh, forward, it allows you to enter data. And then we have these two features together. One is the expiry period type and expiry date. So that means like, uh, say for example, uh, uh, if uh, we are in like uh, 2021 October and we configure the expiry period type as monthly and we uh, enter here the expiry dates as 10. So what it will do is uh, it will let you edit the data uh, uh, from October all the way up to uh, 10th of November. So if it is like the expiry uh, period type is monthly, it means after the uh, expiry of the current month. So if you are in October, so end of October, it will calculate how many uh, days forward from the end or the completion of the period. So uh, end of October means October 31st, and then we will count 10 days forward so that Till November 10th, it will be open. So something like that. You can play around with these uh, features and see uh, how they are behaving. And then here we have option uh, minimum number of attributes required to search. So this again is a kind of a security feature so that we are requesting um, a minimum number of attributes. So at least three attributes have to be en entered uh, in the search item. Uh, so if we mention three, it is like uh, at least three attributes uh, are required uh, to do a search and list. Uh, all the uh, track entity instances who are matching this criteria. And then we also have maximum number of track entity instance return in search. So now I, I, will, I will just put a value like three. Now this again becomes a very handy feature because for example, uh, when we are implementing COVID vaccination system, so this is one uh, practical issue we are having. So people try to list out, so they, they, I mean like, because these are kind of like population registries that you have, there is a chance that somebody will try to uh, list all the people, all the patients available at a particular org unit, right? So that essentially uh, gives, out, gives them the ability to download a list of people from a uh, kind of, a, I mean, if we have the access at district or sub-district level, they can download the entire population, which again is a kind of a security risk as well as performance wise, it is not good for the system. So your system can crash. So to uh, Prevent that, you can say like maximum number of track entity instances which are going to uh, uh, produce in the search. So for example, if you ten, um, fix it at 10, uh, even though like there may be so many people matching, like it's only going to give you 10 of them, right? So um, what we are going to do next is uh, now that we are kind of done with the uh, uh, stage one, we are going to do, uh, we are going to move on to the second one, enrollment details. Right. So here, uh, I, I, I assume you are kind of familiar with this concept of enrollment uh, in our DHIS2 tracker data model. So we have the tracked entity instances, right, that we are going to enroll into a program, right? So uh, here in this point, uh, we are capturing information related to the enrollment. So there are again, like a lot of information or features that we have here for configuration, but you can, I have already pasted the link to the documentation. You can read them and uh, 
uh, and get a better understanding of what each of these means. So for example, uh, allow future enrollment dates means like we have to select the date of enrollment. So that the enrollment date, whether we are allowing for a future date, uh, that's what, I mean, uh, that is what is meant here. But for this TB program, we are not going to do that. And then we have this future incident date. So again, like if you can recall, like there were these two concepts, enrollment date and incident date. Uh, so I, I'm sure like uh, this must have been like, you are, you are, I mean, you, are, you have some idea about these two concepts. So basically like what it means is the enrollment date, the definition of enrollment date is a date a track entity instance. So in this in this scenario, a person, a person as in like TB patient gets enrolled into the TB program, right? So that's the date that is defined as enrollment date. And the incident date is like kind of the date in which uh, the reason for that particular person or track entity instance to get enrolled into this uh, um, program occurs. So for example, let's look at a, uh, look, look at an example. So let's think of uh, a immunization program, right? So if a childhood immunization program and we are going to kind of uh, uh, give vaccines to the children uh, less than one year. So for that one, the date of enrollment is the date that uh, the child is uh, encountered with the health system, right? But again, like the date of incident or the incident date will be the the kind of the birth date for that child because that I mean because of the birth only he is getting these vaccinations, so it's kind of like depend on the program. So you need to have a discussion with the program people also to determine like what would be the two, uh, what would be the ideal dates you can uh, select for each of these concepts. So uh, for this, of course, uh, the uh, enrollment date is what is uh, relevant. Uh, we are like we are kind of considering the date that we first register the per person into our program, right? Uh, but the incident date is kind of not relevant for this uh, TB program. But we have to uh, uh, like uh, re not relevant as in like uh, what we can actually like if we are to define it, it would be the date that the person actually gets symptoms. So that because the patient uh, has the symptoms, that is why uh, the person is presented to the health system and is followed up in this uh, TB program. So with that sense, uh, what we have to do here is uh, we can uh, give some labels, uh, a description uh, that will kind of replace the generic name of incident date uh, when we are customizing the TB program. So we will use uh, the date of onset of symptoms as the uh, description for the incident date. And for the description of the uh, enrollment date, we will use date of initial visit, right? And then um, uh, we have also an option called only enroll once per track entity instance for lifetime. So it's like, if this is enabled, that means uh, a person cannot have multiple enrollments to a program. So he will only be uh, enrolled one time to this program, but but in the uh, context of TB, it is not so because like you can have uh, you can get uh, TB multiple times because a person who has kind of uh, get enrolled in the TB program can get cured and he can get uh, tuberculosis again. So that is not relevant in this scenario. And then we also have a few other options. Uh, some of it, for example, the feature type and uh, related program. I'm not going into too much of detail. So what I will do is I will just. Uh, so we have like uh, uh, steps from all the way from uh, step one to six, but I will give you some time to practice this uh, step number one and two by yourself. So I will stop here, but before uh, uh, giving you the chance, what I will do is very important uh, to click on the save button. If you don't do that, the, the, the whatever the configurations we have done so far will not get saved. So I'm going to click on the save button, right? And once I do that, you can see uh, the program that I created, SNDTB uh, treatment card, right? With uh, the configurations which I have done for the uh, stage, uh, the, the, the first step and the second. The next would be to uh, 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 configure the attributes. But before doing that, I will stop here. And then what you can do is, if you can follow the exercises five, six, seven, eight, and nine in the learner's guide, uh, we can probably like, uh, I can give you around 10 minutes to do those uh, exercises. 
and we will resume in 10 minutes, right? So now we are in the final step in uh, designing a tracker program. So the final one is to follow the stepwise approach to create the program. So uh, in this, we have multiple steps. The first is to uh, enter the program details, which we have already done. And the step two is uh, filling the enrollment details. So that is also now complete. And the step number three is adding attributes to the program. So that is what we are going to do next. So if you can recall, we had the list of attributes that we use in this uh, TB program. And this list, uh, okay, now I, I think you can see the list. So we have the registration number, date of birth, first name, last name, age, uh, sex, family address, and phone number. So these attributes we have already configured. Uh, so there is no point in uh, creating them again. Right, uh, so attributes are already, if, if uh, in your instance, uh, the DHS2 instance that you are customizing, if uh, the same attributes are already present, you can always reuse them. So uh, let's uh, move to the tracker program and try to include the attributes. Right, so you can see the program that we have already created. And the program is this one, uh, the TB treatment card. And I'm going to click and open uh, the TB treatment card, right? And then uh, the step number one and two are already complete. And I'm going to click on the third step, which is attribute. So here you can see the list of attributes which are available, right? So what you can actually do is you can, uh, like if you have a big list of attributes, you can just uh, select from that list and click double, uh, either double click, or you can uh, click on one of them and click uh, click on this arrow icon to move it from this left side to the right. So uh, whatever the attributes that we are going to include um, in this program are the attributes that will be uh, in this box on the right hand side. So let me move uh, these attributes. In fact, like uh, uh, the attributes that we have, uh, uh, all the attributes that we are going to include in our program. So you can, in fact, move all of the attributes here to the from the left to right by clicking on assign all. Right? But uh, one thing that you have to be mindful is if you are not going to uh, create a custom uh, data entry form, right? If you are just going to use the uh, the default form for collecting this registration data for the attributes, uh, the attributes will be appearing in the form in this order. So you might have to kind of uh, uh, alter this order if you want to do it. Uh, say for example, age, I would like to come here after, uh, I mean, so I would like to see the registration number, then uh, date of birth, first name, last name, age, and then probably gender, address, and family, ad and, and the phone number, right? So um, once you do that, if you move down, you see here a uh, few options. So all the attributes that we are using are, are, are listed here, right? Uh, so probably we, we should, we will not use this uh, unique number that is not required, yeah. Uh, so we are seeing a couple of options here. So display in list. So if we select them, this will be listed, this will be displayed in the list of uh, track entity attributes uh, in, in the page. So I will select uh, registration number, maybe first name, last name, age, and sex, right? And here we have an option to make uh, some of these attributes mandatory so that they will have to capture them during the registration process. So for example, we don't want to let uh, data entry people register people without any names, first name and last name. We can make them compulsory as well as uh, the sex. So we have made them compulsory and we have option to allow future dates. And then we have an option to uh, uh, allow uh, the attributes which, are, uh, which, which we can uh, select them as searchable. Okay, so... Um, once uh, oh, I will just keep everything as it is, and once we have we are done with the attributes, 
we can either proceed uh, configuring the program stages, but what I'm going to do is I will save this, uh, 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 the program configuration as of this point and give you the opportunity uh, to do the exercise number 10, which is about configuring the attribute. So I will click save button here. And probably you can take uh, around five minutes to configure the attributes. So we will start, uh, we will come back in like five minutes time. So let me uh, go back to the slide uh, about the overview of uh, arrangement of the program stages in our PB program. So if you can recall, we identified four different program stages in this TB program. So we have diagnosis and continuation one, two, and end of treatment. So um, uh, if you can also recall like the, uh, the, the data elements that we are capturing in each of these program stages are different and none of these program stages are repeatable. And when it comes to scheduling, we will start the first program stage on day zero. And then the second one, we will schedule it uh, around 60 days. And then the third around 150 days. And this end of treatment, we can't actually schedule a particular date because in this uh, series of ev uh, events, or uh, once the patient is following this TB program longitudinally, at any point of the time, he can reach this end of treatment um, phase. So depending on uh, the treatment, uh, uh, the, the different treatment protocol, the time in which the person will complete the program will, will vary. So that, that's why we are not able to schedule a particular date for the end of treatment. But you probably have now a good idea about how uh, the different program stages are organized uh, in this TB program. So with that in mind, let us uh, move back to the configuration of the program. Right. So um, I will open this TB treatment uh, card program right now. Okay. And we are we have uh, completed the step number one, the program details, the enrollment details, attributes. And now we are in this, uh, the, the, the step number four, which is the program stages. So here, what we are going to do is we are going to create all of these prog four program stages. So uh, to do that, what we have to do is uh, we have to click on this plus icon that you see here. And then I click on it, right? And uh, I have to start entering data for the first stage. So I have to give the name. So I will give the name diagnosis initial phase, right? So once I do that, uh, there are few, uh, there are again, few other uh, options available, especially when you are uh, uh, these colors and the icons, which are quite important when you are uh, trying to visualize or collect data using the mobile devices, but, but we are not going to configure them now. And then we have to enter scheduled dates, days from start. So this uh, diagnosis and initial phase is in fact, um, is the first is the stage uh, that we are collecting data for the first time. So for example, if a patient is uh, presented um, to our TB program, we are, we are going to register uh, that person's information, the attributes, and then uh, we will probably uh, enter data for this uh, first stage as well. So uh, because of that, the scheduled days from the start, I will put as day zero, right? And I'm not going to um, check this repeatable icon. So if I check this repeatable, then it will make this program stage repeatable. So you can have multiple uh, events. So like this program stage can be repeatedly collected over different uh, days. But in this case, uh, it doesn't make sense to have multiple stages for the registration. So for the diagnosis, so I'm not going to check that, right? And then um, we have this option, display generate event box when completed, right? So that means like, uh, if, you, if you have this checked, that means like once you complete this particular event, so once you complete entering data for this diagnosis or the initial phase, and then you click, I mean, after you have uh, entered all the data for this uh, uh, program stage and you click on the complete button at the bottom, 
we will we will again show how this works uh, when we are entering data so once you click on the complete button it will prompt us to generate uh, another event so i'm not going to check this i will just uh, say uh, keep it unchecked right and then uh, we have this option uh, auto generate event so when this option is checked auto generate event what it means is uh, the the moment we enter the registration information or, or else the attribute information and we click on uh, save and continue it will automatically open uh, the first event or the event or else like the data entry for this initial uh, the diagnosis uh, stage will be open for us in fact like that's kind of uh, uh, very easy for us uh, if that uh, uh, i mean this event is generated because this is a kind of a, uh, event uh, event that everyone is going to have so I'm going to have this checked auto generate event, right? And then uh, I will also have open data entry form after enrollment check so that uh, once uh, uh, the, the event is open, we, we are presented with the data entry form um, to enter the data, right? And then there are a few other uh, options that we can select, uh, like allow user assignments for events, meaning like if we want a particular user who is registered in our system to be assigned, so that that particular user will be assigned to take care of this event, the, the, the particular stage, right? So that is why we have it. So here I will just keep it unchecked. And then uh, uh, you have another option where block uh, entry uh, form after completed, meaning like when you complete the event, it will block the data entry fields. So it will kind of gray, the, all the data entry fields will be grayed out so that nobody can change this, uh, uh, nobody can uh, enter, enter data. So I will just keep it unchecked for the moment. And then uh, there is the option ask user to complete program when the program stage is uh, complete. So if you have it checked, that means like uh, uh, follow, I mean, after this program stage is completed, it will prompt the uh, person to complete the program. So uh, we are still in the first program stage, so we are not going to check that. And then um, ask user to create new event when the stage is complete. So uh, uh, I will just check that. And then uh, uh, the, the events, uh, the next option is to generate events based on the enrollment date. So if you can remember, we defined the enrollment date, which is the date we register the per person, the patient into this program, right? So that is the kind of day zero. So we want all these program stages to be generated based on that particular date. So because of that, we are going to have this uh, checked and then we also have this feature called due date. So all the uh, program stages or else the events in DHIS2 have a, uh, I mean, like we can configure a due date. This becomes very important, for example, uh, in programs like uh, vaccination, where we always schedule the next date. So in this, uh, uh, I, I can, I mean, if I'm not using it, I can actually hide the due date. And then, uh, uh, there, is, there are two uh, fields here down at, uh, at the bottom, description of report date and the due date. So um, the, for the report date, I'm defining here the label that should appear. So I will put uh, here the date of visit. Right. So once this is done, we are done with the stage details. The next would be assigning date elements. So if you can remember, we had these four different program stages. So what we have done here is to define the name and the details related to this first program stage. The next would be to assign what data elements are required to be captured in this uh, first program stage. So here uh, we'll have to select uh, the program, uh, I mean the data elements. So we have many of them. So I'm going to kind of filter. So I will start typing TV. So now I will see like these are the ones which are available for the TV. So I'm going to select uh, all of them like this, and then um, click on this button here. So it will go to this side, but I'm, I also want the weight, which is not displayed. So I'm going to select this weight in kg and double click that, right? So now I have all the required, um, all the required data elements for this uh, uh, first program stage onto this right uh, right side box, right? Okay, fine. So uh, then I just move down and here uh, we can, we have few few options. Uh, for example, we can make uh, them compulsory. 
and this allow provider elsewhere means like if we want to allow uh, the data to be captured in a different org unit, uh, uh, not, not the same org unit we are capturing this event. So that's why it, uh, it, it is there. And then we have a few other options, uh, especially these uh, uh, options like uh, render type uh, is really helpful when we want to uh, have different visualizations in the, in the capture form in the mobile devices. So I'm going to make a few of them compulsory um like uh, the tb patient type and then the disease site i will make it compulsory and then the type of treatment right and also i will make a few of them uh, available in the report so for example i will make the tb patient type and then the disease site And uh, what else? I should have the type of treatment, and then the sputum smear, and culture result. Yeah. Okay. Right. So now we are done with the uh, first, which is the stage details, and then assigning data elements to this stage. Okay. So the next step is to create the data entry form to collect the data. So I'm going to click on this number three, which is create data, data entry form. So here we have a couple of options to create the data entry form. So we have the first option is basic. So here we will have all the data elements kind of uh, selected, which are listed in a, in a, in a plain design. Uh, then the next is, is the section. So section is uh, the one we usually prefer uh, when we are uh, designing most of the uh, TB programs. So here what we do is we are able to put... Uh, uh, we are able to arrange the data elements in different sections, which is kind of similar to what we have in the, the data entry, uh, the forms, the paper forms. So um, this is kind of a very nice way of uh, uh, making the data, data collection forms look nice. So uh, we are in fact like today going to configure the mass section forms. The custom is you will have to, um, you, will, you, will get, you will have a separate, uh, so let me click here. So you have this interface, it's a specific editor where you can kind of uh, even include HTML, right? And kind of create a, a very um, colorful, vivid uh, data collection form. But one uh, issue that you may have is if you configure a custom data collection form, it, it may not work that well in mobile uh, mobile devices. So if you, uh, so that's one reason why we always uh, opt for data uh, section forms because it uh, works uh, seamlessly on, uh, the mobile as well as web. So uh, hope you hope you can remember the different sections. But let me share a slide again so that you can quickly recap how these sections are arranged. Um, right. So these are the sections that you will see uh, in the first uh, first stage. So we have the we have a section for the type of patient, the disease site and type of treatment for initial phase, the, sp uh, the sputum examination results and the weight. So what we are going to do is to configure these uh, five sections and then add each of these data elements to the relevant uh, section, right? So let's uh, do that now. Right, I'm going to click, uh, click on this add section to form, right? And I'm going to uh, add the first uh, section, which is type of patient, right? So type of patient. And then I will keep the uh, rendering type as the default, right? And I click on add. Right? And next, I think I will add all the sections first and then assign uh, the different data elements. So the next uh, section I need is uh, the disease site. Add and then type of uh, treatment for initial phase, and then the next section is sputum. 
examination results and we have another stage which is debate right okay so we now have this uh, each of the five stages and now what we have to do is click on each of them so once i click you you will see that uh, uh, when i click uh, you you uh, uh, there is this uh, black color uh, highlighted line that appears uh, around this box right so uh, when each of this uh, section is clicked you will see that it is getting highlighted like this okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this first one which is the type of patient and then i have this list of data elements uh, onto my right side right and I have to select the appropriate one and click on the plus button. So here for the type of patient, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this data element, the TB patient type. So to do that, what I have to do is I have to click on this plus button and you can see now this is grayed out and the patient type is selected and it's included in this section, right? And then for the disease site, I'm going to add uh, uh, two of them. So the uh, first would be the TB disease site and then the next would be um, the eptp site and for the type of treatment for initial phase i'm going to select the type of treatment and then sputum examination results so i'm going to select sputum smear result and then um, culture result and the gene expert result these are selected and then finally the weight so here i'm going to select the weight in kilograms right. done so now you can see that uh, all the five sections have been configured and the relevant data elements have been added to each of these sections okay so our uh, section form is now ready but what we again have to do is to click on this add stage button so that uh, it, uh, it can get saved I'm going to click on add stage button, right? So we are done with the, um, the, the uh, adding the first program stage, but then uh, for us to save it, actually, uh, the entire configuration to the, to the existing metadata of the program, we have to click on this save button. Then only the program stage is actually getting saved uh, inside this uh, program configuration. So if I open it now, you'll be able to see when I go to the program stages, this first program stage is saved, okay? Right, so let me quickly add the second program stage. I'm also aware of the time. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm uh, going to uh, add the pro uh, second program stage and uh, probably I will stop there and uh, give you the opportunity to practice. And uh, then uh, in the meantime, we will try to add uh, all these four, four program stages during the exercise, okay? Right, so let me try to add the... Uh, second program stage so for that what i'm going to do is uh click uh, and i mean under the program uh stage details i'm going to put continuation one right and then uh if you can remember like here we are going to see this patient around two to three months time so means like from the date of enrollment this patient is going to uh, uh, be encountered in around 60 days right so i'm going to uh, 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 assign, uh, put the value 60 in this box, right? And then, um, uh, we will put, uh, auto generate event. I will put, and then, uh, we will also put, uh, ask user to create new event when the stage is complete and generate events based on the enrollment date. So these are the ones uh, that we are going to put. I mean, like, uh, so I, I slightly changed uh, the configuration that we put to the previous form so that we can see how it is going to uh, affect uh, the, pro, the 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 um, final uh, look and feel of the data collection form. Okay. So we also need to add the description, the, uh, the description of the report date, which we will, uh, put as examination date. 
And next, we are going to assign the data elements. So let us quickly assign the data elements. Uh, we will add um, the type of treatment and then sputum smear result and then culture result and of course the weight in kg. So once those are done, I will make um, all these three compulsory, right? And then we want to create data entry form. So here, uh, again, we have three sections. The first would be the type of treatment for continuation phase and the sputum examination result and the weight. So. Uh, I'm I'm quickly going to add the uh, the three sections. If you if you if you don't remember the sections, kindly refer to the our design document where we have mentioned all the um, different sections. So I'm going to create this section here. The first is Then wait. I'm going to add uh, uh, for each of these sections the relevant uh, data data elements. So for the type of treatment continuation phase, I'm going to add uh, the type of treatment, and here I'm going to add the sputum smear and the culture result, and for the weight, I'm going to add the weight in kilograms. Right. And I'm going to click on add stage, right? So we have this continuation one also there. I'm going to click on save, right? Okay, so uh, what I will do is I will just stop here and give you the chance to cre uh, create the remaining uh, two stages along with the first and second stage. So you have the instructions in the learner's guide. So uh, probably we can take a break of around uh, 10 minutes. In that 10 minutes, uh, try to configure all the, uh, I mean, uh, as much as possible, the program stages. And then uh, after the break, uh, we will uh, start with the last section, which is about um, the access control and sharing. Okay. So I'm going to stop here and give you the chance to do the exercises. So uh, we are now, we have uh, designed all the program stages. So in fact, I designed the uh, program stage number three and four. So uh, only difference is like when you are configuring the stage number three, we have to put, uh, put the schedule days from the start as 150. Other than that, uh, it's just, uh, it's quite similar to the uh, second program stage. Uh, and then when it comes to the end of treatment, uh, the only change I did was uh, I'm asking user to complete the program uh, uh, once that uh, stage is over, right? So those are the two main changes when you are configuring the stage uh, three and four, right? So the next stage is what we have. I mean, in that uh, stage, stage number five is about access. So here we are kind of defining two levels of access. So the first is about uh, which organization units in our DHS2 system is going to have access to this program. So you can remember the three main dimensions in the DHS2, so organization unit is one main dimension. So here we are going to uh, define like at what org unit level uh, or org unit group, uh, the, the data entry users will going to have access to this uh, TB program. So what we can do is like, for example, if you are going to assign it to all the facilities, we can select, uh, uh, from the organization unit level facility and click on select button. Then it will select uh, all the facilities. Or else if we just want to assign uh, to one of the health facilities, we can just click on one of them like this. But what we will do is we'll assign uh, to all the facilities. So when I click on uh, select button here, you will see that uh, all the health facilities in the entire training land uh, have this uh, program assigned, right? So uh, that is the 
first uh, type of access that we are creating, right? And then the next is about uh, the roles and access. So this is uh, about a concept called sharing settings, which we will uh, discuss in detail in uh, uh, probably next week. Uh, I mean, there we will talk about the access controls as well as uh, sharing settings. But uh, uh, what I'm going to do here is like, I am going to assign which users or user groups are going to have access uh, to this program stages to weave data and enter data. So I can see here, if I click on this uh, SNDTB card, TB treatment card, if I click here, you will see right now, uh, the public access is there. So if I click on this pen icon, you will see the metadata has uh, uh, can edit and view access and the data ha has no access. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, disable access to the metadata for public. So I'm going to create the public no access and for data, no access. So that means right now, uh, nobody in the system can actually enter data or view the metadata, right? The next thing is I have to kind of um, define who is going to have access. So to do that, what I'm going to do is um, I, uh, I'm going to click here at users and user group. And here I can start typing uh, the users or whatever the user group. So we, here we will define whether an individual user is going to have access or if we have created user groups in our DHS2 system. So again, about user roles, user groups. We will be discussing uh, more about it on Friday. So that's why I'm not going into too much of detail, but I will uh, just assume like for the moment, I will assign this, uh, uh, this program to myself so that I can enter data. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will um, select my user here, which is this one, private test, right? And once I do that, I will, um, for this user, uh, 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 metadata access is already there and I'm going to uh, give data access for capturing and viewing. So once that is done, I click on apply button, right? Okay. So the next thing is like, um, uh, you will see some exclamation marks here, right? So that uh, it differs from the program. So this, uh, the, the changes I have done, so you can see here public, uh, no public access and accessible uh, to one user. We have to make it apply for all the program stages. So uh, here all have been selected. I'm just going to click on this button, apply to selected stages. So now you will see the same uh, sharing settings that is like no public access and access uh, for one user has been assigned to all the program stages, right? So once that is done, I can click on save button so that uh, we are kind of almost done configuring the program. So the only section that we did not cover today is about notification, but uh, even without notification, we can actually start entering data. So I'm going to click on the save button so that um, all the basic configuration that is there for this uh, program is kind of complete, okay? So uh, I think now it's the time to uh, see our program in our data entry screen. So what I can do is I can click on this uh, uh, apps icon here and open. But, and, and one more thing, like it's always good uh, practice, like uh, if there's any, like, uh, for example, if you have been uh, configuring metadata, it's good uh, practice to um, get rid of the browser cache uh, to avoid unexpected, you know, like sometimes you may be expecting a particular metadata to be visible in the data entry form. But uh, if it is not that, one main reason why it happens could be due to, um, uh, the uh, browser cache. Just give me a minute uh, to figure out my caching issue, but uh, till then, um, yeah, I, I will try to use incognito, but what you can do uh, uh, till I get this sorted is to try completing the exercise number 12 and 13 in the learner's guide. Just give me two minutes. I'm, uh, I'm going to clear the, I mean, close my browsers and then open and um, get back to entering data. Emma, maybe I can just show it. Uh, yeah, please. Just so we can, okay. Yeah, so uh, this is the program that he made. Okay, I'm in the same system. 
same program. Okay, you can see that it's the same configuration that's there. It follows, you know, all the, the steps um, basically that he's outlined in order to create this program. Okay, so after you go through all those steps, and there are many steps, and we lost about half the group um, somewhere along there, we will review this in the morning. These last two steps that he went through regarding sharing or assigning the organization units and sharing the program. Okay, and um, we will review those. I know, uh, I'm sorry, we are a bit over time, but you can see there's a lot of steps we have to go through before we get to this final stage. Okay, and once that's done, you can see here, here are the attributes that he's configured in the same order. If you remember, it's been a little while, but some time ago, he used those up and down arrows in order to configure um, these attributes in the order that we see here. Um, we see here um, um, an incident date, we see here an enrollment date. Um, I'll just make that incident date a couple of days back. And um, in this case, we're not generating the registration number. We're entering it in. Um, we have a date of birth. Um, we'll enter, just uh, enter in uh, example individual. These ones marked in red, these are the mandatory fields that he had selected. Okay. Um, let's just say this guy is aside and save and continue. Okay, then when we go into the program, we'll see the stages and you see they're scheduled, okay? And these are scheduled based on the periods that Pamela had entered when he was creating the program. So we have this one here at 60 days, this one here at um, five months, okay? The equivalent of days from this first period. You can modify the days, of course, if you deliver that service on a different day, but the whole idea is to provide some idea of when these are supposed to happen. We don't see the end of treatment stage because this stage is not created automatically. Okay, and it's not scheduled. We can add it in. So if we go to add in the stage, you'll see it here and you can add it in. Okay, so if the person dies prematurely, for example, and lose them to follow up or for any other reason that's part of the classification of the end of treatment, you could add in that stage. Within these stages, you'll see the sections and you'll see the data elements that he's added to each of these sections. Okay, so you'll see here, these are the ones that he's added in. You see the option sets tied to those data elements that we um, discussed earlier. Okay, so after you've gone through everything, you can go to data entry and you can look at the program that you've configured and you can kind of get a sense whether or not um, things have been made correctly. Now, sometimes you might not have to wait to the end. Okay, for example, if your program has several program stages and you kind of want to see what it looks like, you know, you've made one stage maybe and you just want to kind of get a sense of what it looks like, you know, you can go into um, tracker capture and, and view the configuration and kind of see, does this reflect what you want and then, you know, make some modifications based upon that, all right? But eventually you'll have to go through this entire process um, in order to get here, all right? So it is a kind of a longer process. And for bigger programs, like we didn't even create the option sets and, you know, those are all made for you. You can imagine if you have to kind of do that on your own, can take a bit more time, you know? There are tools and um, other types of ways. We can theoretically get this in quicker. You can import things, for example. We have these metadata packages, which are kind of pre-configured tools for you to use as well um, that allow there there was some discussion in that in the chat um, earlier okay so there are ways this can be done but we've just gone through the whole process so you understand from start to finish you know all the different components that are required to kind of get here and this is just the, the kind of basic baseline right we have our program configured but there are a lot of other steps people have been asking about things like program rules we've been talking about things like indicators right there are other things we will add then to this configuration um, as we move on all right, but I'm just going to kind of pause here, okay, because we've already kept you about half an hour over time. Um, I do sincerely apologize um, for that, okay. We're going to stop here, okay. You can go through and, and finish the exercise if you would like. Um, you can do it, you know, maybe tomorrow, even if you're a bit burnt out at this stage, okay. We will review these last two components with the rest of the group um, just to make sure everyone's kind of caught up, all right. But once you're here, you know, you just can kind of interact with the program, make sure everything is appearing exactly as you set it. You can see in this case, you know, everything is um, exact to Pamela's specifications, right? You can see the stages, the data elements, all the option sets that he's tied to those, everything's kind of functional. If it's not, it's okay though. Okay, that's one thing I do want to emphasize. You know, nothing's going to be busted if you just um, do it wrong the first time and then realize you have to fix it. There's no problem, okay? People often, you know, I, I still make mistakes when making this configuration all the time. It's not a big deal, right? You just go through and change it. It's not uh, not going to cause any major problems, okay? Um, if you if it's on a production system and there's other things happening, then, then that can be a bit more problematic. But if you're making it for the first time, just testing it, 
no problem, right? You can always go back and fix your mistake, right? It's not uh, kind of mission critical to get it all right the first time. Okay. So as Pamela mentioned, you can have a look at that exercise, you know, either today or tomorrow, depending on kind of well, where you feel um, you are right now.